Today is another day in the neighborhood of what could go wrong or what went wrong. Yeah. So in the last video, we got that sucker running like a top on its side that barely spins. But it ran better than the time before. So anyway, I hope you understood that. Like top just and then so I was bebopping up the rocks and just boom, I hit I hit a rock. But it was, I mean, it was freaking some wheel speed. It was doing what we needed it to do and it was kicking some butt. I think what happened is the motor went, hi radiator, my name is Fan Assembly. <laughs> I'm gonna mess you up today. Boom! Pretty sure that's what happened. I'm gonna have Hillbilly figure out what's going on, probably remove the radiator, because my guess is we're changing it. There ain't no guessing about it. Is yeah. how bad it, it was uh, puking out. It was steaming to... everywhere. Changed. So I'm gonna have him get on that. I've got a few things to do this morning. I'll be out there in a minute and we'll get this all figured out. Okay, so before we can go on the this recovery that we got, we have to fix the little issue that happened when we took it for the test drive after we tuned it up. Oh yeah, it's spewing out bad. All right, well, right center. We got a leaking radiator. We don't know if the fan might have started coming apart. We have no idea. All we know is that it was spewing out coolant out of the center of the radiator on the inside. So we gotta get it tore, uh, tore down, get the radiator pulled out, see what happened, and hopefully Napa has a radiator. Okay, so I found the draining cap, just a little plastic nut, twist it loose. I don't think there's much coolant left in there. I don't either. It's done draining. Now I'm gonna work on getting this pulled out. Like I said, we hope and pray Napa has one in stock. If not, we'll be bondoing this one, which we've done. We have bonded radiators before. There are derby car radiators and it does hold and does work. But if we don't have to, we really don't want to. Okay, now put the catch pan underneath. So we can catch it. The rest of the coolant. Oh yeah. Fan hit it. Jack up the transmission, check to make sure that mount's good. And this is how you check the transmission mount without pulling it, is you just jack it up. And if it comes off, then we know it's bad. It's bad. See the gap? Now I'll slow that down so you can watch the gap close. That's bad. Okay, so it was the fan. What? Does that mean we got bad motor mounts? There's about that much movement in the transmission mount up and down. <laughs> but the thing I noticed is look at the big, how big that spacer is that they put on there to put this pump on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The belt smacks that, but the belt doesn't ride on that. No. That's merely just a spacer. Yep, the so space. So we could take it in. The fan out. There's four bolts that holds the fan assembly onto the water pump, because that's what bolts up. We needed it like yesterday. All right, so the reason this is so important to get fixed today is we have to go to the top of Hanging Tree. I'm not gonna tell you guys what we're headed for, but let's just say it was an honest mistake and I'll prove it. All right, so Hillbilly's on his last little nut. This fan should come off. So we're hoping to slide that fan in. We just wanna get a little bit more gappage between the fan and the radiator because we don't want them to make out again like they did. Look at what Colton's done for me. Thank you, kind sir. We're probably gonna do an electric fan assembly eventually, but not today. This has to get to the point where we can go. It's getting the common thing anyway, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, that's true. So it's not even gonna need this. So maybe it won't get an electric fan assembly. That'd be a waste of time. Even changing the radiator is a waste, but we need it. <laughs> why is the, waste, why is the uh, electric fan assembly a waste of time? We could use it on the Cummins afterwards too. Look at that. I'm good for something. That is a universal spacer. Literally, if that could just get lathed. This is our fan spacer that we've got to try to, yeah, we got to shrink it. Hillbilly's going to work on the transmission mount now. Upon further inspection, it's actually not in too bad a shape, but we're still going to replace it if they have one. If they don't, we can reuse this one. So that's the only one they had. It's a quarter inch like we were looking for. One thing that you guys can see is it's a little bit smaller for the lineup pin. We need that to be the exact size or else you won't ever be able to get this centered. I'm gonna go see if I can't find a rubber hose, slide on there and make it the same thickness. The holes are offset, so you gotta put it in the right way so the bolts will line up. It does adjust back and forth. First bolt started. This one's a little more tight fit. Cross thread. Is it? Yeah. Don't wanna do that. They say when in doubt, cross thread it out, but I wanna do that today. Okay, so I 
found it, the drill bit, it's a three quarter. Now when you drill this, we have to make sure it's completely straight in all directions. We don't have to go very far, about that far. Finding away the burr, so that way I know it sits flat. Now, it sits flat and flush, it's centered, so that means we're good to go put it on. Boom, just like that. Now, fan on. Finish getting these, I'll hurry and get these tightened down. Okay, so I got these two upper bolts tight. We're gonna let this jack down, let the transmission come down, and then we will put the nuts on, tighten that down, and this should be all good to go. Looks like it's going where it wants to. Make sure they're tight. We don't need them loo coming loose. Yeah. Oh yeah. They're tight, that's good to go. They had one radiator for this in stock. So I done and took it, because we needed it. So while we were under here, we noticed these wires hanging down. We figured we don't want them catching on anything or that drive line. So we're gonna use some of these zip ties. Just zip tie to the drive line, that should be safe. Okay. Have you ever zip tied someone's drive line? No, but I've seen it done. <laughs> okay, the fan is expertly installed. Now let's expertly install the fan shroud. And that leaves just enough room to slide that new radiator in. Brand new. Never been used or installed. Gently. We're gonna go your way a little bit. There we go. Very gently. Was able to show you guys the clearance between the fan and the radiator because of the fan shroud. I can stick my gorilla hands in there up to here before I can't go further. So half inch, about an inch gap. That should help us out a lot. You getting it caught in? Ooh, getting antifreeze up my sleeve. Better than up your nose, I guess. Yeah. It really burns when it goes in your eye. Colton's down there about, he almost has that hose clamp tight. So I'm going to clearance this. <laughs> you should take your pocket knife, kind of run it like this and get rid of all the melt burrs. So this right here is the filling tool. What it does is it vacuums the all this air out of the system and then you close the valves. On this valve, you open it and it sucks the fluid in and the fluid replaces the vacuum and it starts, uh, hoses will collapse and then as it gets starts filling up, the hoses will start expanding to where they need to be because it's now coolant in there instead of air. If you don't have one of these tools when you're just filling up the radiator, a brand new radiator, filling it up, you get air pockets and it will cause your motor to overheat because it's not allowing the water to flow like it should. That helps prevent that. You can see the radiator radiator hoses are collapsed. Now, open this valve. And look at all the coolant go. A little less than half, and it's still flowing. I think it might take five gallons. With that sucking the antifreeze in, you can see that the hoses are starting to come back to shape. This gauge doesn't work completely, I don't think, because it's saying that we still have about three pounds of pressure. But if you notice, the water's flowing back into the bucket. So that means it's done doing its job. Last step of the coolant system, to top the radiator off because it won't fill the radiator completely full. And then this coolant system is done. But Colton did notice that uh, we have an exhaust leak on the passenger side. Colton noticed that two of the bolts in the manifold are missing. So we'll go to the bolt bend, see if we can't find two bolts that will work. Coolant system is done. Okay, so we fired it up and it's, make, it's, it's making a rub noise once in a while. So it's got to figure out where to fix it. It had to let itself clear and we think it's hit on the crowd. I mean, it's, uh, it's the belts, I'm wondering if there's antifreeze on them. Probably, because they got some coolant on them. Because don't they go sticky? Yeah. It's when it's flexed out. See all that rub mark down there? So we're going to let the fan self-clearance and just hope for the best. Hopefully it doesn't clearance the radiator itself. All right, so we've just about got it ready to take it up the mountain. Hillbilly's going to try to see if he can get some bolts in that manifold, and then we're going to load up and take off. We're playing the guessing game on which size fits the best. Why don't you just take a bolt out? I just don't want to break one in there. It's a Ford, why would it break? Exhaust manifold bolts break. Even on a Ford? Yeah, on all vehicles. I'm gonna attempt to take one of these bolts out without it breaking. Holy cow. 
I think I was way off. Huh. Good old trusty Ford bolt came right out. <laughs> the nice thing about having a bolt assortment. That one's a little bit long, but you could cut a couple threads off. Look at that. Look at it. The bolt we found is the right one, just a little too long. So I'm gonna trim it down a little bit. I like to put a nut on before I cut it. So when you take it off, it will get rid of the burr. So you're not trying to fight it to put a nut on. And then tighten it up. Okay, now if it leaks, it's cause it needs a new gasket. Well, that's that. Okay. We're going on a trip back up to the top of the mountain. We're ready to go. Colton, Hillbilly, and Steve, they're all gonna be in the trekker because we always have to take a backup. Somebody's gonna have some troubles today. We don't know who. We said where we were going. Yeah, but we're not supposed to tell them we're going to Hanging Tree to get my can am So it's not called Hanging Tree then. What's it gonna be called? It's gonna be called the Vehicle Eater. Because this is the yeah, second vehicle that had to be left up there of ours. That's true. <laughs> all right, so we're gonna head up to the Vehicle Eater today. We're gonna take you guys along with us, but you know us. We gotta stop at Maverick. Gotta make sure everything's got gas, and we need some gasoline for our love machines. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We filled this up last night, but better safe than sorry since the fuel gauge is not working now. We don't like to pass up fuel stations. Well, we're in for a long day. You don't think we're just gonna get up there, get it right out, come right down? <laughs> if only it worked that way. Yeah. All right, so we are on our way up to the infamous Vehicle Killer Trail. Stop your Maverick. Got us a little bit of snacks. Can you believe it? A bag of jerky is $25 now for literally six ounces. That is absolutely insane. Whatever, we still buy it. It looked like it was pretty wet. Glad that I brought my muck boots because uh, my normal shoes, they're held together with duct tape. What are you doing there? What are these called? Paddle boards? Slap boards? Pa slap paddle? Yeah. It's a lot harder at that little one, ain't it? This is your first time coming up here, ain't it? Yeah. You don't even get to experience the full trail. No. It's all new to me. It's a gnarly trail. Moments later. So I think it's a little low on cooling. Oh. Too bad. And the geyser happened. Whoa! Oh, yeah. Like I said, like I said, like 200 degree coolant just doused hillbilly. So we all stepped back. Anyway, we've made it to left hand fork before hillbilly made a bad decision to do that. All I know is that tow truck is so bumpy. So once we get up there, we're dropping it to like 15 pounds each tire. How much fruit have we got, Hillbilly? Um, uh, by the way, we haven't even went halfway yet. We ain't even quarter of the way Something happened to King Fred. He's dead in the water. Robbie's tried to start it and it won't start, so. Uh oh. No fuel pump. <laughs> no fuel pump. What does that mean? Is this a fuel? Didn't we just put in a new fuel pump? Listen, no fuel pump. Did the switch come undone? I don't know. Better check it because there's no fuel pump. Ah! Turn the key on. Yep. That came out. To start it. Our little jumper. So why don't we just try to <laughs> cut those wires and twist them together so it doesn't do it again? Well, we will in a little bit, but I don't know why, out of everything we've done, we still have not fixed this little switch. So that's probably like a thing we should do. Maybe. Try it. Look at that. We're geniuses. We fixed it. Mm 
What happened? We lost the wire. Where's the wire? It's gone like the wind, bullseye. Rob, I got electrical tape. If you want to just cut it and twist them together and tape it. I think it's safe to say it's not King Fred anymore. It's King Tree. Why? Because you got leaves all over the back of this bed. <laughs> so you don't need that other wire anymore? Mm -mm. We're just going to put this on. This is unnecessary taping, but we're going to just do it anyways. Well, it's not unnecessary because it could arc out. Yeah, we don't know. <laughs> We're just gonna wait here for a minute because we don't hear or see Hillbilly. So it's the tractor grinding hotter than normal. I put a different carburetor on there and I think it might have it a little lean. If you have them lean, they will run hot. So I'm gonna adjust it where it's not lean. It's also idling high, so I'm gonna put an extra throttle spring on real fast. Okay, now it's idling a lot better. It's a lot lower idle. We'll see how low of an idle it really is on the tack. Go from there. All right, so I'm about, what? I thought maybe like 30 seconds ahead of Hillbilly. I've been sitting here for a good five, six minutes. Still hasn't came. Don't really know what he's up to. But the nice thing is check out his view. 900 RPMs, a little lower than I'd like. I'd like it about six. 650, so but it's better. Than here. Oh yeah, a little higher than what I like, but it's better because it was idling at like 1700 RPMs. Where have you been? I've been waiting for hours. I had to adjust the carburetor a little bit more because it's running hotter than normal. I think it was running too lean. So now it's temperatures dropped and I also got the idle to drop down so it wasn't 1600 RPMs. I knew something was up. I knew the old jackrabbit wouldn't be that far behind. And we're off to the abyss. We're about to take a wrong road. Don't go so fast. This road is really rough. And with 65 pounds of pressure in these dang tires, I don't know what Hillbilly was thinking. So there's some rocks here in the middle of the road and Robbie was a little bit worried about getting past them, but he's doing pretty good. Okay, start cutting. I think the truck will make it past it, no problem. So far we've conquered every single obstacle, except for getting down in and retrieving the broken vehicle. The bottom of this valley is where we're going, into the abyss. Oh, maybe we didn't quite make it past all the obstacles yet, but we're close. That right there, ladies and gentlemen, top view of Hanging Tree. I don't know if you guys can see it, but right there is the Can-Am. So he made it almost all the way out, it looks like. So it should be too tough to get out of there. All right, we've made it to the outlet, the very, very top of Hanging Tree. Now we gotta get King Fred down that hill. We're gonna drive it all the way into the Can-Am. We're making bad decisions today, but what would it be if we don't take ourselves in and get ourselves out. We've got winches, we've got trees, we've got everything we need <laughs> for a perfect disaster. What we should have done is take that one from the bottom up, like we did the Bronx tire to see what we need to do Yours? To it. No, yours. Oh, shh. To see uh, what we need to, all need to do to it. I don't think I would have made it any even half as way that the Bronx tire did. Hey, you're too heavy. Way too heavy. And with 65 pounds of air, I think we should air down right here you, before we even try You don't like that? No, no. it's so bumpy. So bumpy. So let's grab something and let's air it down. But the air was kind of fun in the tires. Yeah. Do you have an air chuck? Oh, what's the point of having onboard air if you don't have an air chuck? Look at it. So what do you think? We should go down to like 15? Yeah. We don't have bead locks, so we don't want to go. Vintage. <laughs> it's. No, thank you. It's not pushing it. Oh, there we go. Let's see where we're at. Like 50? Maybe. You maxed out my gauge, it's only a 50 pressure gauge. This is gonna take a while. We'll just go ahead and do this. I think I have a valve core remover. He's going down this? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we're just gonna stop at 20 because this is taking like five hours to let the air out. 20 PSI should work. No way, I wonder if it kept the hose. 
down at the bottom. Just ignore the radiator, it's leaking. It's coming up from the block like the uh, water pump. No way, no way. Yeah, your water pump is bad. No way. <laughs> Do we have coolant with us? A little jug. It's like that much in it. No way. No way. So what's the plan? <laughs> <laughs> Looks like we're leaving King Fred up here. No way. No way. What a pile. <laughs> Here's your broken. Hey, no, that's fine. We have a jug and we have access to water. If we blow this up, I don't really care. Yeah, At this do, point, because it still runs and dries. We need it for recoveries. You know, if it blows up, then we can't use it for recoveries. No, no that just means we have to put an engine in it quicker. Um, well, let's get it turned around and let's get down in there. Let's at least get the can am and then let's worry about getting it out. Is the fan going to hit anymore? It Is broke it where it hit. And it looks like it's been, unless that's old. Oh, holy crap. Look at the freaking fan pulley. That's why it's hitting. Oh, so your water pump has slop in it. Okay, okay. It might have been going out and then... Yeah, I'm going to start it and just make sure that fan don't hit the radiator. Shut her down. Seems like the whole motor's... It's making your whole motor... That's what the vibration is, is that water pump is... Let's get it up here out of the way. And then let's take the trekker down in and try to get the Can-Am. Hanging tree is a, a car killer. <laughs> car eater. <laughs> Let's go down and get the Can-Am as far as we can get, and then we'll just all bail in the trekker and go, and we will go get a water pump. It's our only option. We're not calling Matt for this. We'll put a water pump at the top of the mountain. Who doesn't want to put a water pump in at the top of a freaking mountain? Beautiful up here. So we're having some dilemmas, and we don't really know what to do. I could just camp up here tonight. That's a, that's a beautiful idea. So we're gonna take the trekker down in, and we're gonna try to get the Can-Am with the trekker. I'm thinking Fred's spending the night here. I'm also thinking that we should never come up hanging a tree again because it hates our vehicles. <laughs> our vehicles are always breaking down, getting stuck. No more hanging tree for our vehicles. <laughs> we Matt's just need tire. better vehicles. <laughs> yeah, it blew Matt's tire. Did he rip that sidewall? Yeah, rolled two times. I rolled my Can-Am twice. <laughs> Matt rolled. This is going on you too. Wrong star broke. Matt had to haul it out. So when it was stock and then when it wasn't stock. My Can-Am is broke on hanging tree. Now King Fred's broken. Dude, I don't know if we want to take the trekker down into the depths of hell. <laughs> that, that's our only means home tonight. What is you your paint it on? We got Lamborghinis. Let's take the trekker down in. Let's go. Hey, go get the jackalope. Jack <laughs> rabbit. Jackalope. <laughs> Sorry. All right, we're doing it. We're taking the trekker down in, and we'll just see what happens. That's gnarly, and that seems top heavy. If he gets stuck, the tow truck could still pull him out. Yeah, yeah that's true. Hillbilly, if the trekker gets stuck, we can still use King Fred to pull it up. You bring that jackal up down here. Oh, dude, you're already going off the ground. You're already, dude. Oh! <laughs> oh! <Stand on> that. <laughs> Holy crap! Oh my gosh! Go, 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 go! Go! <laughs> oh! Dude! What are we doing? What are we thinking? Careful. Oh. What? I don't know, it kind of a sudden stop. Oh, that's because her axle's on the dirt. <laughs> Dude, you're bottomed out on your front end. Not no more. I think this is already a terrible sign that we should have turned back. Yep, that would, that would have called us quitters. That's right, and we are not quitters. So let's get down into the Can-Am. You want to ride? He asked if we wanted to ride. After we've seen that, no, we don't want to ride. Yeah, I would say no. I'm gonna use my Lamborghinis. Well, I see the Can-Am. So we'll get down here and see just how bad it is. Don't look too bad. At least they got it up that. 
All right, how do we get the trekker down this? That's a complete drop off. You gotta be this way, like a lot, a lot. Oh, this ought to be good. You're good, you're good, you're good. Turn that way, driver. Slow, you're gonna drop off hard. Like hard, hard. Like hard, hard, hard. <laughs> you're on your leaves. So, guess what? What? I never said I was bringing my trekker up this. I never said anything about going down this. That's right. Hillbilly has officially brought the trekker to Hanging Street. He would never make it to the big waterfall. He no never. way. Absolutely no way. No how. Not gonna happen. That first thing we went down, well, the second, there's no hit trees anywhere for him to get up. We're gonna have to use like lots and lots of lots and lots of winch extensions. Hey, Robbie. Yeah. I think there's something wrong with the Can Am. Front oh, tires are like this. Oh, you think? I'd say there's something wrong. Um, so first things first, you probably want to get the trekker turned around. It ain't going to do us no good going that direction. So we got a problem. The Yankum rope is up there with King Fred. <laughs> serious? Dead serious. You got all the soft shackles. We got wind slides, I guess. All right, so some of you may wonder how we got to this point right now at the top of the big waterfall on Hanging Tree Trail. Roll an amazing montage of what my Saturday looked like last week. Okay, it's doable. Woo! I did the same exact thing, but when I got up to the top, you can see my rock slider. Look at that orange. The waterfall took victim to my Can-Am. I bounced off this rock so hard, both wheels went flying like this, and we'll just let you see how it turned out. All right, so this was supposed to be a day of fun and trail riding, and Robbie ruined it by breaking his steering box. At the very last obstacle, on the way out, the big waterfall, I hit a rock, and my steering box left the chat. Oh, so that's one of the problems. There's the tie rod. All right, so that pulled right out of the steering, the end of the rock right and pinion. Steering gear. At least it didn't happen on the trail, literally right at the top. This waterfall is way slippier than it was when we came up the last time. I'm saying it's almost as slippery. Yeah, it's pretty slippery. So after I got the Can-Am out of the way, we got Matt and a couple other people up. We ended up winching almost every single one of the motorcycles because we had a group of 30 people. There wasn't very many side-by-sides, the rest were motorcycles, and those things were insane. If anybody ever asks to take 20 motorcycles up Hanging Tree again, I'm gonna be sick that day. While we were waiting to get everybody up, winching everybody out, Steve and our buddy Andy, they were actually able to put the steering back together, but we don't know how long it's gonna hold. And I've got a broken axle. So when the wheel came flying out, the axle broke, tie rod came off. They've got the socket back in the ball. So we're gonna try to see if it'll drive out of here a little bit, but we're not gonna do much. We wanna try to get it up as far as we can. So my wheels are not straight, but you can see down in here, the steering's back together a little bit. I don't know how long it's going to hold. Okay, let's go a little bit. So far, so good, but it is loose. Well, obstacle number one. So far, he cannot get up. Somebody remind him that's our ride out. There's no way. Done, boy. Hell yeah. Thrilled. It's holding so far. We got this. It might come out, but yeah, we got three wheel drive. Look at so far, so good. It's holding.
Winch it. No, we're gonna try to get the trekker out of this. I don't see how the cat am's gonna get past this. So we're gonna get the winch all hooked up. I'm gonna get Hillbilly in position. You don't want him to try again? He, I mean, he can try, but he needs to be over here so he can be by the... By the tree? We have a winch point. I thought you said it wouldn't do it. Good job, Hillbilly. He might have had a pretty good guide or two. He'll never admit it. I might have screwed up. I was afraid that it wasn't going to make it out of here. So when Cody and Andy put it back together, I just left it. I didn't want to be somebody's problem. It was getting late, so we took off. Well, I just made it up this waterfall on three-wheel drive, and it's holding. I mean, I just, I just pulled up to that rock, put pressure on it. So we're going to try to keep on going. I mean, this might just turn into a leave Fred and come back and recover Fred. <laughs> <laughs> now we're going to recover the jackrabbit. I don't know how that can have made it. The trail repair held, three wheel drive, tires just a blaze in smoke, but at least we got to ride home. What if I backed up and come wide, kind of up the hill? I don't think you can get it. You're barely moving and you're losing all traction. We're having all sorts of recoveries today. I'm just grateful that the cat ham got out. That was ridiculous. So we didn't even need to bring the wrecker up and break it. What you're saying is it went from recovery to test to recovery to getting out of here. Yeah, had to get a new radiator. Now we need a new water pump. This thing's going to be brand new before we even change it to a 12 valve. I'll be excited because I have a brand new motor. That's right, it is hillbillies. I wouldn't trust it. Well, trust it or you? I wouldn't trust it, as in me. <laughs> Everybody watch out. That's how we're turning around. Well, Fred zero. Actually, no, Fred recovered one, but then so his up. breakdown counteracts it. So basically Fred's at zero. Trekker's at one. Can-Am is at like 10, cause it got Wait, itself out. Why is the How's the Trekker at one? It didn't do anything. Got itself all the way to this hill. Down there. That's true. <laughs> and got That's itself true. to the Trekker, hill. Trekker, zero. No, give it a half, cause it made it. No, because it didn't it pull anything. It didn't even pull its own weight. So zero. That's right. That's right, the Can-Am self-recovered. I blame it on the driver. Anyway, we're gonna get this all reeled back in, make sure Fred's out of the way. We'll get a itemized list of what we need to come back up with and we're headed back into town. Everything coolant except a radiator. <laughs> all right, so if you wanna get technical, Fred did not leave us stranded. We just wanna do some preventative maintenance at the top of the mountain. So, as always, we appreciate you. If you enjoyed this video, go check out this one. Will this help at all? No, I don't think it's gonna help you where we're going. <laughs> <laughs>